Welcome to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, bringing baby boomers proven strategies and innovative products for getting fit, staying fit, so you can live a longer, healthier, and happier life. Here's your host, best selling author and fitness advocate, Phil Ferris. This is Phil Ferris, and welcome to our show. Never Too Late for Fitness Radio provides answers and straight talk about fitness, nutrition, and healthy lifestyles for people over 50. Our goal is to educate and advocate health and fitness strategies that help you to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. On some shows, we feature everyday people like you and me who have acted and reclaimed their health and fitness. We all love a success story, especially if the person is facing the same challenges we are. Hearing real success stories helps inform, motivate, and inspire us to live a healthier life. On other shows, like today's, we focus on health and fitness industry professionals who share how they help their clients who are over 50 achieve their goals. My guest today is Ray Lynn Morvey. She is an AFAA certified fitness instructor and senior fitness specialist. Ray Lynn has certifications in Zumba, Zumba Gold, Pilates, Advanced Pilates, Flow Yoga, Yoga and Pilates on the Ball, bar, active aging, and foam rolling, as well as many fitness continuing education certifications and credits, especially in the areas of injury, recovery, and active aging. Ray Lynn, who is 54 years of age, teaches an array of classes and works with students from 18 to 87. She enjoys teaching every class and age group, but working with students over 50 really makes her happy and proud at the end of the day. Helping people over 50 exercise is not just about keeping them fit. It's also about keeping them safe, strong, flexible, and balanced. Her approach is to consider each person's body and fitness level to help them to stay healthy and, if possible, erase some of the issues that aging has caused them. The goal is to improve their overall quality of life. And thank you, Raylan, for being on the show today. Can you just share a little bit about your fitness practice? Because I know that you work in several different locations. And talk about what your practice is like and, and the people that you work with. Okay. Well, I, I teach all types of different fitness from Zumba to Pilates, yoga. Um, but I also have a focus on senior fitness. I'm a senior fitness specialist um, at the Crystal Lake Park District. I do the Super Seniors Program. And I also do the Fit at 55 and Beyond program, which are two completely different programs. I'll, I'll get into that a little more later. Um, and I also teach a lot of the classes at the Y that the mostly people over 50, 40, 50, 60, 70 take. Um, and I also work over at Senior Services. I teach uh, Zumba Gold there and Chair Pilates. And also at ELA Senior Center, where I teach Pilates as well. Um, and at any type fitness, I, I teach Zumba there. So I, I work with a different range of ages of people, from, you know, all the way from 18 to, you know, in the 80s, possibly even 90s. So, so far, I haven't got anyone in the 90s yet, but my oldest person's been 87. But I find that um, I like to work with the population over 50. Because a lot of people over 50 are treated to the same type of workout that everyone else is treated at, okay? And when you get into a group fitness class, you're, you're expected to do what everybody else is doing. However, your body might not be able to do certain things anymore. Say you have knee issues or your, you know, back issues or you you hurt yourself in some way or say you're um, you have something wrong with your heart all right working in a class that is specifically for people over 50 with an instructor who understands people over 50 is very important and that's that's what we do pretty much at the park district is I know each and every one of my students and that that's important because a lot of Instructors do not know their students personally. And I talk to them in private at some point because you're not allowed to ask the client 
in front of a class, you know, are you have knee issues or whatever, you can't do that. Um, we, we work under the same guidelines as HIPAA. So we have to keep these things private. They can tell us whatever they want, but we can't ask. So, so I always take them aside and I say, what are you concerned about? You know, what, what do you need to work on? What injuries do you have? Um, how can I help you? Um, and some of them don't even realize that they have issues. Um, and that is, that is something that as we're working together, I can view, I can see maybe their, their shoulders are a bit frozen or their hip mobility is not that great. Um, so so, sometimes it's me viewing and sometimes it's them telling me. And then that way I can work my program to things that maybe everybody can do. Most people can do a lot of things. And, but I know that such and such person has an issue with this. So I, you know, I could look over at them and say, okay, instead of doing this, you do this. Okay. Um, So it's really important when you're doing group fitness as a person over 50, that you work with somebody who understands that, you might have limitations and as you get older, you're going to get more limitations and you don't want someone who's going to push you past your heart, you know, your heart rate. You don't want someone who's going to make you do a 90 degree squat when your knees are aching or you don't want someone who's going to make you jump up and down when you're, you know, that mobility is no longer in your feet. And, you know, maybe maybe you're good in all those things. Maybe you need the challenge. You want the challenge. And, and most people, 50, 60, even 70 do. They want to be challenged. But it's being challenged within your own range of motion, your own state of health, your own ability. And if you have an instructor who's pushing you towards something that is not comfortable for your body, then that you should probably seek someone else who understands that our bodies change as we get older and we should not be pushing our joints beyond what they're capable of. We should be working on keeping them mobile. We should be worried about keeping them, you know, keeping them fluid, but we should not be pushing beyond what we are capable of doing because that's only going to cause injury and, you know, no, nobody wants to injure anybody, but unless you're talking to people and you know what's going on, you don't know. You mentioned a couple of things. One is you say some people know they have limitations. Sometimes they don't know they have limitations. Perhaps you could talk about some of the more common issues that you see and how they affect people's ability to train and what maybe some examples of, of how you uh, modify or adapt workouts so that they can get you know a, a challenging workout for themselves right okay well some of the things I see in people as they get older and it's not usually typically in the 50s but it starts in the 50s um, where you're you've had a life where you're leaning over your computer screen and your shoulders are starting to hunch forward okay so or you're you've you've developed um, kyphosis which is rounding of the spine or you're beginning that trail towards osteoporosis. Okay. A lot of people might not even realize, but I can see by how the range of motion of how they move their arms, I can see, I can tell if they are starting to develop some of that folding over of the shoulder. Um, the problem with that is we often, when we work out, we, we train the front and the sides of the shoulder. Okay. We're, we're looking to, you know, keep the shoulders pretty tone looking, et cetera but we ignore the back of the shoulders. So that starts to get weak. So that's when we start to hunch forward. So what I do is I I work into the backward range of the shoulder. I still work the front and the sides, but I, I work into the back of the shoulders so that we can start to train the body and strengthen those muscles in the back to pull those shoulders back so that you're not, hunching forward. And and that's really important to start doing in your 50s so that as you get into your 60s, 70s, you're not you don't start to get that hunch in those shoulders. So it, 
it's about learning to try, you know, train the correct muscles that you might not have focused on as you were younger. Um, hips, we work a lot on hips because um, if, if you look at the side of the body, okay, every part of our body is aligned. Okay, so if there's something wrong with your hips or your hips are weaker and say you're you're running or you're doing Zumba or something um, where you're a little more high intensity, if those hips are strong, that's when you start, you can start pulling into your knees. That's when you start getting knee injuries, ankle injuries. Same thing too, if your ankle is not strong, you're, you might be making up for it in other areas of your legs. So then again, you might be putting too much tension on the knee. So it's about making sure that every muscle in the body is strong and that we begin to work on muscles that we don't think about when we're younger, such as the, most people don't know that the quadricep, which is largest muscle group in the body, um, has part of it that crosses over into the knee. Okay, so we don't think about quadriceps when we think about knees, but we need to. We also need to think about the strength of the calf. So, so say you do have a knee injury or you're starting to feel like you're, you're starting to get some irritation in your knees. All right, that's your body is telling you your knees need some help. Okay, they need you to kick in some muscle around that joint. Okay, we can't strengthen joints, unfortunately, and and once a joint is torn without surgery, we can't really fix that. All we can do is fix the muscular structure around those joints. So say if you if you are feeling your knee is hurting, you need to work those quadricep muscles in a safe range of motion. I mean, most people think, okay, quadricep, let's do squats. No, you might be better off, and you know, and squats are great. But at a certain age, 90 degree angle is no longer safe. So I, I like to do mini squats. Um, so where you don't overextend the leg. Um, but exercises where you sit in a chair and you focus strictly on that quadricep. And also working that inside of the thigh and inside of the quadricep um, is very important to help strengthen those knee joints. Because um, basically we have... Um, not to get too technical, but the outer part of the, the quadricep towards the outer side of the knee is way stronger than the inside of the knee. So then, of course, the stronger part is taking over and the inside part, the weaker part stays weak. So then you start to have the pulling and the tearing of the joint. And you know, that, and that you know, for the hip too, there's stronger muscles, say in the gluteus, you know, the glutes and there's weaker muscles. So you need to identify those weaker muscles and you have to strengthen them in order to avoid more pulling of the joints. So, um, so inside raises, um, with the foot tilted out and lifting up and down is a excellent exercise for strengthening the knees. Also strengthens the right part of the hip the part that we don't get to in our daily lives. Also clam, clam shells, which basically you keep the feet together and you close in and out on the knees. And you can do that seated. You can do that laying down. Um, so basically you, you open the, the legs and you close in and out, in and out, um, and work up to about 30 reps. And you can, you can even add ankle weights to your upper legs Things like that that kind of help focus on those weaker muscles that we most of us ignore until we start to get joint pain. So that makes sense. So what I found is as people get older, this is myself as well, is instead of training the muscles I like to train and doing the exercise I like to do because I like doing them because that's what I learned how to do when I was in high school and college and beyond. Um, I need to work out the muscles that need to be worked out so that I have the full function of my body. Yeah. And if I, and if I neglect them, that's invariably, that's when injury does occur. You know, yeah. and, and it is the, the muscles, the, the neglected muscles uh, that they need to have. 
very specific work done. Otherwise, they will, the imbalance in your body will cause a problem when you push it beyond its normal level, which is what usually happens when, when people first come in to working out is, oh, why? I used to be in great shape and they try and go back to what they used to do 20 years ago. Right. And, or 30 years ago. And invariably they get frustrated or injured or both. Right. So having someone that can point out the, the specific differences so that they don't injure themselves will allow that person to work out longer, get more sustainable results. And if they see the results, they enjoy it more. And if they enjoy it more, they're going to do it more. And so, so that's the, that's the, the, the power that is, why do I want to work the back of my shoulders? Because you're stooped over. Right. You never, you always neglect them because you can't see them in the mirror. Right. They're the show muscles. And, you know, yes. and, and so, so those are things that we just have to understand. It's, it's, it's a mindset, um, if, you know, whether it's someone that's never worked out or it's a mindset for the person that always worked out. They just stopped it for a while. Right. And, and so that's, that's a very important message to, to, for someone to understand that as opposed to let's, let's do the workout of the week because it's new and exciting and it makes you sweat a lot. Right. So it may not be what you need in order to uh, get the kind of fitness that you want. I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the mindset of the person over 50. How, are, are their, how is their approach to fitness and their, and their expectations around fitness different than perhaps the younger clients that you work with? Well, they're, they're more concerned. I mean, of course they still want to look great and everything like that, but it's not so much about that anymore. It's about, um, you know, I'm starting to have pain when I walk up the stairs. I'm, I don't have as much stamina as I used to have. Um, things hurt, joints hurt, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble sleeping, things like that. Um, but I, I do find a lot more complaints about joints, aches and pains that, you know, they probably weren't experiencing in their 40s. You know, and, the, and as you get older, if, if you don't take care of those things, those are only going to get worse. So, but, you know, mostly they, they have more aches and pains and they're probably not as flexible as they used to be. Some are. I mean, they're, I know people who are amazingly flexible for their age. But the majority of people are starting to lose that a little bit. So they're, they're concerned with that. Um, but most you know, people in their 50s and 60s, they still want to have fun. They still want to try that, you know, the new workout of the week or the month or whatever. They want to be challenged. They need to be challenged. Um, but they, they need an instructor. And, I, and I've been told this because they've been to other instructors that didn't understand that. Sometimes they're not going to be able to do certain things. So basically they, they understand their own bodies to a point. They know what hurts them. They know what's not right. Um, but they need to be with somebody who's going to respect that. And they need to respect their own bodies and not push beyond what makes them comfortable and what their bodies are able to do. Because if, if you do try and push something that your body doesn't want to do, you're going to get hurt. Uh, we've, we've experienced a, an unprecedented challenge to uh, fitness, and that's called the uh, pandemic or the COVID-19 crisis. Can you talk a little bit about how that has changed your client's perspective on training and how you've changed your way of delivering it for them? Well, um, because of COVID-19, every, every gym, at least still in, in Illinois specifically, um, is not allowed to operate um, because of the um, social distancing. So um, unfortunately, we're not allowed to see our our clients or our students in person at this time. Um, I personally, I am doing online classes. Um, we're doing classes through Zoom, not as much as I was normally doing. My fear is, however, my, my super seniors, which is which are the ones that I'm most concerned about right now, they don't have computers. So they're not getting their exercise and that to me is very upsetting. I'm very concerned about them. Um, you know, we were making great progress now because of this, they're not getting their exercise. All I can do is hope that they remember what they learned and that they're doing it at home. Um, but you know, that's a sad reality. Um, but you know, most people in early seventies, sixties, fifties, they, they have the computer. So we're doing some things over the computer 
which is which is great that we're able to do that. But on another front, everybody's in a little box, so I can't, <laughs> I can't see exactly, you know, like if somebody is doing something improperly or whatever. So that, you know, that's concerning to me. I, I mean, I could see a little bit, you know, um, but, you know, unfortunately, I don't have that close contact where I can really see, you know, where everybody's at. You know, I, I can see if they're going the right direction and things like that. But it's and it's not as easy to go, um, you know, so and so, you know, don't bend your knees so far. So, you know, I can't do that being on the computer with them. But, you know, at least we are getting our exercise in. So, that's, so the, the good news is they're getting they're getting some exercise. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's in a group setting. So you're a sense of they're not in this alone. The challenge, though, is that it's, it's harder to do the cues and the corrections on right. an individual basis just because the computer is limited in terms of how big the screen is and how much you can actually see uh, right. while, while you're doing it. But besides that, what, what, what are some of the other uh, issues that your clients have talked about that, that the uh, social distancing has created for them? Mostly just that they're not being able to go to their classes like they're used to. I mean, I have I have some students that they go to class every day, you know, they're doing something every day and now they can't do that. And they and, you know, people who take group exercise, they're people who like the group atmosphere. So they're not motivated to work out on their own. They, they need that socialization. They need that class atmosphere. They need that instructor there, you know moving them along. So unfortunately, with them not being able to go to the gym and do all the classes that they normally do, you know, they're, they're not getting as much exercise as they're used to getting. So that's, that's the main difference. And, and you made the comment that you know, there are people that, and I've heard it from many uh, people in the classes I've taught and, and been in, uh, I would never do on my own what I do in a class. And right. it's, it's, it's like, it's part of their routine is I go to my class I get my exercise. I don't have to think. I just have to let my body go. And then, you know, there are people that are very motivated. They, they would work out uh, no matter what. You know, if they were locked in, in one room, they'd find a way to, to work out. But that's not the majority of people. Right. And yeah. so, so it's um, making as much of it as available as you can via the computer, which is, has limitations. Uh, and if people don't have a computer, that, that limits it even more. I'm talking about the social and, um, I guess, the emotional part of, of uh, the, the work. Now, how, how do you try to address those needs for your clients with the, the programs you are running? Um, well, they, they well, when we first open up, when I first open up the Zoom app, I, I allow like five minutes for everybody to say hi to each other. And cause they miss each other. They, you know, they're used to seeing these people all the time. And, and of, of course, I teach at many different places. So some of these people don't know each other. But they're actually getting to know new people. So, you know, I, I allow that little bit of talk time before and, you know, after after we're done, you know, they can talk and they can ask me questions if they need to. And I am keeping up, you know, I'm messaging on Facebook, you know, if any of them need to talk to me about anything, they, they know I'm always, you know, I'm a very hands-on instructor. I'm, you know, there's those instructors that, you know, they do their class, they leave the class, that's it, you know. My people know that they can, you know, message me anytime, you know, and talk to me. So that's, that's with that. So, you know, they, they do still, they still want that socialization. They want to see people when, when that screen comes on and they see each other, they get, they're excited. <laughs> so this like for a lot of them, it is, they're also their social outlets. Okay. Yeah. I, I think just, it's, it's important to, to recognize that, that we are social beings and, uh, you know, fitness is just one of one of the vehicles of allowing us to do that. And unfortunately, most of the other vehicles of socialization have also been cut off for people. Now, there's there's people out there right now that are looking for ways. They're, they're over fifty, and they're looking for ways to exercise. What are some tips or guidelines would you give them as they you know as they start going through the internet to find a class or instructor that uh, would be right for them. So what are some guidelines you give to make sure that they don't get stuck in a class that's that's not right for them? You want to kind of look for something that you've kind of been doing, you know, say you do Zumba Gold. You might want to, you know, look for Zumba Gold classes. Um, you might want to look for people in your own area. 
that you, you might enjoy that person. And after this is all over, maybe you want to go and, and do their class. But you, know, you always say that the beauty of having it online is if you don't like a class, you can just leave. You know, <laughs> then it's going to know better. So I, I think most people know within the first, you know, three songs of, of any class or the first fifteen minutes if that instructor's for them or not. If they, you know, if they're going to enjoy that instructor or if they feel like that instructor's safe for them. So you know, you can, can just flip around. But I, I mean, I would try to go locally. You know, look for someone local. Look, you know, ask ask Brent. You know, we still can communicate online, you know, we can still message each other. You can say, you know, oh, I remember you saying you loved your, uh, your Zumba gold instructor, for instance, you know, what's that person's name? Do you know, are they doing online classes right now? Um, and, you know, maybe they are, maybe they aren't, you know, you can check on Facebook. Like we have, um, Cary Park district has a Cary group fitness page. I personally have a Zumba fans in McHenry County page on Facebook that's Zumba fans of McHenry County. Uh, and it, that before was just for Zumba. Now I'm posting all my classes on there. And I'm also allowing some of my other instructor friends to post their classes on there as well. That's a good reference right now to go and see who in the area is, is still teaching online classes. And, you know, not, not all instructors are, but some are. So for, you know, our local area here, those are a couple of good references to try and find, you know, okay. people who are still running classes. You know, a good way to find out and ask other people. And the other is, you know, check online, check Facebook. Uh, eventually, we don't know when, uh, gyms will be back open and we will be past this period of social distancing, at least temporarily, uh, hopefully permanently. And so we will be starting the big reset. Okay, now we can get back to our lives in a new normal. What are some things that you, you are trying to recommend to your people to, to be able to do when, when we do get into the reset? What are some things that people should uh, do to make, to get back into the fitness routine? Personally, for me, I would say come back and take it slowly at first. Don't, don't go back to class and thinking, you know, after not working out for six or eight weeks or something that you're going to be right where you were. <laughs> Right. When, you know, when all this happens. So, you know, un- unfortunately, muscles don't say that, you know, they, they go away after you don't do them for so long, you know, not go away, but they, they get less strong and, and less dense. <laughs> so take it easy, work your way into it slowly. Don't try and go all gung ho right off the bat because it's probably going to get hurt and you're probably not going to be ready. Work up to that cardiovascular level, you know, actually, you know, try to keep that cardiovascular level. During all this, you know, take walks, do something during this. But absolutely, when when it's time to come back, take it easy. You'll get there. You know, our our, our hearts are very strong muscles. They usually, within a week or so, they they start to catch back up again. So just come and take it easy when you come back in. Don't, don't go crazy. <laughs> okay, so I think that's good advice. Is just to uh, take it easy, start back up. Uh, during this period where we are, do as much as you can. Keep moving. Walking is good. Walking fast is better. And if you can, you know, jog a little bit and get the heart rate up, that's that's even that much better. I mean, that's right. when you're out there running a marathon. But the more that you can, you know, I guess um, challenge your body to the, the the level it can be. For some people, it's you know, it it, it is running full speed. Uh, and for other people, it's we're running for long distances. Others, it's uh, you know, it's doing you know a mile walk, a two mile walk, a three mile, just adding a little bit more every day so that you are getting your heart and your and your cardiovascular system going and keeping your your your, your muscles moving. Which is, yes. uh, I found that I spend more time on the computer now, and that's not good. Yeah. I got to remind myself. <laughs> I take a class. I say, oh, this is a great class. All of a sudden, three hours going by, and I, I haven't moved. <laughs> and yeah, it's like yeah, okay, no, I, I engage the brain, which is good, but I now have to engage the body, and I have to right. give myself permission to do that. A lot of people are going through that, right? Even me, I'm spending more time on my computer too. You know, that's how we're socializing now. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> we're all learning a lot about ourselves and about what's important. What are some of the biggest lessons learned that you've gotten so far 
about fitness that you could share with my listeners? Uh, um, well, I, you know, like I can say, I work with people in their 80s, so I, I see firsthand what happens to bodies as we age. Um, so basically, the more you keep up with your fitness as you age, you know, the better off you're going to be. You know, if you're, and, I, and, and I'm not saying it's, it's never too late to start exercising. However, if you want to keep things easier on your life, on your body, on yourself as you age, you got to keep moving, you know, got to keep moving. And, and, you know, you don't have to do high impact, you know, exercise classes or anything like that. Keeping that joint mobility, keeping that bone density, keeping that balance, things like that as we age is so important as we go through spend a little time practicing your balance once or twice a day. Just stand on one foot for a few minutes. And if you stand on one foot and you're, you know, not holding on anything, if you have to hold on, hold on. And you start to feel an ache, okay, in in your legs somewhere. That's where you need to work. Okay. That's where you're weak. So that that's a good way to determine what muscles that you need to start working on or where your imbalance is in and things such as your leg. But honestly, just keep moving. Do do something for your muscles every day. Do something for your cardiovascular health every day. Balance, stretch, just move every day. Just do something for your body. Preferably go to a class, work with somebody who knows how to work with people your age, you know, and who's going to understand your body and get to get to know you. Um, having an instructor who knows you well and is going to take good care of you. There's nothing better than that. No, I can't even say how much that is worth. And, you know, don't be afraid if, if an instructor is intimidating to you or they're making you hurt. It's OK to go to a different instructor. You don't have to be with somebody who's going to hurt you. Great, great, great advice. Listen to your body. Yeah. Share it with whomever you're working with. And, and if they don't help you adapt so that you get the kind of results you want, find somebody who will. Now, Raylan, if people want to contact you, Try out some of your classes. Learn more about you. Where should they go? Um, all my classes, I'm posting them on the on my personal page and also on the Zumba Fans of McHenry County page. And what, what is your uh, personal page? Raylan Morvey. It's just my, can my you, normal page. Can you spell that for us for those? That, sure. Uh, um, R-A-E-L-Y-N-N-E. Last name M-O-R. V like in Victor, A-Y. All right. So go, go check that out on Facebook. I want to thank you so much for sharing your, your, your approach to training. It's very refreshing. Uh, your clients are very lucky to have someone that uh, takes such a uh, specific interest in not only uh, their fitness, but also their well-being. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. You've been listening to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, hosted by Phil Ferris. To learn more about the guests or resources on our show today, or to listen to past episodes, go to nevertoolateforfitness.com.